Welcome, Mr. Babson. I'm delighted to see you, sir. Kaidas, what are you doing here? I've come to serve you, sir. But you're, you're, you're dead. I shot you through the heart. Oh, don't let that disturb you, sir. I forgive you completely. Theater 5 presents Miss Greta Tyson in Land of Milk and Honey. Johnny Babson, and this is my story. When I was a kid in Hell's Kitchen, my mom always said that if I acted good and decent all my life, I'd go to the land of milk and honey when I died. That's what mom called heaven, the land of milk and honey. But one night when I was 15, I stuck up a candy store with a wooden heater and netted almost 12 bucks. This decided me on going into the heist business full time. After a stretch in reform school, I got a real heater and tried to knock off a bank, which was a big mistake. So when they finally sprung me, I went straight. By the time I was 40, I was netting real important sugar in a strictly legit business of my own. I had a fabulous apartment with an English-type butler called Titus. I was one bachelor that was really living until one certain night when everything busted wide apart. I just buzzed for the butler, and I had big plans spinning around in my head. Yes, Mr. Babson. What may I do for you, sir? Uh, lay out my black silk suit, will you, Titus? And uh, take the night off. I won't be needing you. Uh, thank you, sir. Will you be dining out? Yeah, but uh, later. <laughs> a whole lot later. I'm having a visitor. I understand, sir. A uh, young lady? Sure, a young lady. What do you think? I'm sorry, sir. I hope you have a pleasant evening, Mr. Babson. <laughs> Just before Titus went out, I recalled that he raised one eyebrow at me in a kind of funny way. But after I showered and got dressed, I forgot about Titus and began thinking about my expected visitor. Her name was Diana, and she danced in a line at a high-class club. And I was really flipped on her, because uh, at her club they never hired clock stoppers with their shoulder bones sticking out. Anyway, the minute Diana got inside my front door, she had her arms draped around my neck. Oh, Johnny, this is wonderful. Aren't you glad your little kitten crept in? Oh, you know it, baby. All day I kept saying to myself, I'm going to Johnny's place tonight for the first time. I couldn't hardly believe it. Well, you better believe it. Because it won't be the last. Hey, is this the mink coat you were so excited about over the phone? Oh, yes, Johnny. Isn't it sensational? <laughs> it ought to be. It set me back the price of a custom-built Rolls. Oh, it's so wonderful. I don't know how to thank you. Ah, we'll talk about that later. Now, how about a nice long drink? I'd rather have a short one if you don't mind. Okay, there's a shot glass right down there in the cabinet. I'll get a bottle. You find it? Yeah, I see it. Holy Pete, look what I found down here with the glass. Don't touch that, Diana. Just leave it there. But is it loaded? Yeah, I had a robbery last year. Don't worry, I got a permit for it. Kitten isn't worried, lover. She's just happy. Oh, that makes two of us, baby. Hold out your glass. This apartment, it's real swell. It's like living way up in heaven. Yeah, and you're my own private angel. Oh, Johnny, that's beautiful talk. It's just like poetry. When you look at me with those great big eyes, it's easy to talk like that. But all of a sudden, I don't feel like talking. Me neither. Oh, lover, your arms are so strong. Just tilt your head up. Mm. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? I was just thinking about the look on his face if he caught me here alone with another man. Who? Who are you talking about? My husband. What? You never told me you were married. He never asked me, lover. But you should have told me. I make it a strict rule never to do that. Do what? Romance another man's wife. But, Johnny, you love me, don't you? You, you know I do, but, but I don't want trouble. Now, you should have told me, Diana. Because, like I said, I make it a strict rule never to... 
There. Now forget about your old rules, will you, Johnny? Just hold me tight. Well, okay. But just this once. Mm, I... Diana! By George, I knew it! My husband! Your husband? Diana, Sam, you, Mr. Babson. Now, wait. I didn't know Diana was your... Hey, put that poker Keep down. Careful, Johnny. Here, take this. Use it. No, I... Use it, I said. If Diana hadn't shoved that rod in my fist, Titus would have brained me. After the big bang, his eyebrows flew up and he dropped like a, a lead weight. I saw a big red stain on the left side of his white shirt. And I knew he was dead. So that was my finish. After a lot of hocus-pocus in the courtroom, my lawyer blew the defense and the judge gave me the chair. On the night before I was due to ride the lightning, Diana came up the river to say adios. She acted real weepy, but she didn't feel any worse than me. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, are they really going to do it? Yeah, baby, they really are. Look, like, like I told you that night, I, I didn't know Titus was your... Anyway, I, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, darling. I didn't love him. I love you. And I'll keep on loving you until we meet again somewhere. I don't think we'll meet anywhere, baby. Not with my record. I've stolen, I romanced another guy's wife. And now I committed murder. I blew it real good. So much for Mom's land of milk and honey. Land of what, Johnny? Nothing. Kiss me goodbye, kid. And go on back to town. <laughs> So that was it for me and Diana. What happened after the switch was pulled or how long it took is all a, a big blank inside my head. I only know that when my brain started working again, I found myself sitting in a fabulous apartment. And now came the payoff because the door opened and in walked Titus, my deceased butler. Welcome to eternity, Mr. Babson. Titus! Don't be alarmed, sir. What, what place is it? As I said, sir, this is eternity, where all earthly wickedness is forgiven. In this land, you'll find comfort and joy for all time to come. Yeah, but what about your wife and the bullet I gave you? Minor details, sir, minor. Don't give them another thought. You seem perplexed, Mr. Babson. Well, yeah, I, I am. I, I mean, this ain't exactly the place I, I expected to wake up in. Uh, no, sir, I, I suppose not. Oh, I see you're staring at my shirt. I'm frightfully sorry about this crimson stain, but it appears in every one of my shirts, even fresh ones. Will you try to get rid of it? It's kind of creepy. I'll do my best, Mr. Babson, but no amount of rubbing or scrubbing seems to obliterate it. Uh, now, sir, I, I fancy you're curious about my presence here. Uh -huh, you can say that again. Uh, well, sir, in this glorious land, you shall never be required to move a hand or stir a muscle. All the pleasures and comforts you ever dreamt of on Earth will be provided. I've been assigned to you by the Commissioner. By who? The Commissioner, the Superintendent of Eternity. You'll find him an excellent gentleman, I assure you. He has appointed me your manservant until the end of time. Yeah? Hey, that sounds great. Yes, and now, sir, if you just follow me, you'll find that your bath has been prepared for you. How did you know I wanted a bath? From now on, sir, you'll discover that your slightest wish has been anticipated. Here you are, sir. A fine steaming tub. Yeah. Hey, and look at those things. Uh, sir? Uh, the spigots in the bathtub. One says milk and one says honey. Uh, yes, sir. I knew that would please you. You see, we've arranged everything for you. Oh, brother, I'm really going to dig this eternity. Titus wasn't kidding. I had everything. I spent the next couple of weeks stretched out on a terrace, eating Titus's tasty meals washed down with expensive wine. Everything was great except for one thing that Titus kept doing, which drove me nuts. And one night, for the first time, I yelled at him. 
The poor guy, he looked so miserable, I thought he was going to faint. But, Mr. Babson, why are you so angry? What have I done? It's what you're always doing. Cut it out, will you? But, but I, I don't understand. What am I always doing, sir? Rubbing at that red stain on your shirt. Oh, oh, I am so sorry, sir. I know it displeases you to look at it, so, you see, I, I'm always trying to make it disappear. Well, it don't disappear, so leave it alone. You hear me, Titus? Knock it off. Please, Mr. Babson, don't be impatient with me. My only object is to serve you and make you happy. Aren't you happy, sir? Sure, Titus, I'm happy. I, I got everything I ever wanted. I, I'm sorry I hollered at you. Uh, now beat it. Uh, yes, sir. Is there anything I can do for you before I leave? Anything at all? Yeah, yeah, there is. Call a plumber to change those lousy spigots in a bathroom. I want them to read hot and cold. Hot? Oh, I'm desperately sorry, sir. But that would be impossible. After all, Mr. Babson, this is the land of milk and honey. <laughs> I guess it's hard to believe that any guy could get fed up with the life I was leading. But after three or four years, I was itching for a change of pace. Titus couldn't help me. So I decided to have a talk with the commissioner. And while I was thinking about it, he was standing right there in the room, polite, friendly, like... like a nice guy. You wanted to see me, Johnny? Yeah, if uh, you can spare a minute. Oh, I can spare ages. What's up? Have you a complaint? Well, not exactly a complaint, Commissioner. I'm just getting a little bit bored, I guess. Ah, don't get me wrong. I appreciate all you've done for me, but enough is enough. Ever since I came here, I never had to do any work, and that bugs me. I can't even work if I try. I started a small business last year, but it folded on account of no customers. Everybody's got everything. Hmm. You don't need money, do you, Johnny? Money? For what? What's to buy? I got everything, including money. But, but what can I do with it? That's what I mean when I say I'm bored. I crave action, any type of action. Mm, I suppose that's true. I have it. Why not take up a hobby? I'm game. What kind of a hobby? Let me think. What about planting a vegetable garden? Does that appeal to you? Commissioner, right now, anything appeals to me. Then we'll begin right away. Come along, Johnny. Well, my boy, you're about to begin your hobby. This is the site of your vegetable garden. Yeah, and oh, brother, am I ready. Uh, uh, how do I begin? Well, in these bags, you'll find seeds of every variety. All you have to do is to plant them in these holes. But... I wanted to dig the holes myself. Nonsense. That's backbreaking work. But I wanted to do it. I wanted to use my muscles. Fiddlesticks, Johnny. Come on. Just drop the seeds in. Yeah, drop the seeds. Oh, that's the way to do it. Oh, you're a born farmer. Yeah, I... Hey, what's going on here? Growth, Johnny. Mother Nature is working her magic. Yeah, but, but the plants are already shooting up. So they are. And the vegetables, they're, they're ready to pick. Oh, but I didn't grow any. I didn't lift a finger. Of course you didn't. That's the whole idea of this land. I think it's a crummy idea. Really? Oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps another kind of hobby would have had more appeal. Uh, how about collecting stamps? There's a splendid hobby. Go back to your apartment, Johnny, and I'll see that you get a supply of stamp albums. <laughs> Hey, what the... Oh, brother, wait till I get hold of that lousy commissioner. I'm right here, Johnny. What's the trouble? These stamp albums you sent up. This one and about a hundred more in a bedroom. Oh, yes. Are they the kind you wanted? No, I wanted empty ones. Every stamp that was ever printed is already pasted up in these books. What are you trying to do, drive me crazy? No, Johnny, I'm just trying to save you labor. Yeah? Yeah. Well, here's what I think of this lousy stamp collection. And I'm going to the bedroom and tear all the rest of the albums. Save yourself the trouble. These albums in the bedroom have already been torn to pieces. What? 
Are you kidding? No, Johnny, I'm not. As I told you, I'm merely trying to relieve you of physical labor. Yeah, well, what can I do? Think of something for me to do, will you? Well, now, let me see. Oh, I have it. A splendid idea that should please you very much. Yeah? What? The companionship of one woman, Johnny. Just one woman whom you can love and cherish. How does that sound to you? Hmm, not bad. Good boy. The commissioner told me that my butler, Titus, would fix a little private supper just for two. And that night, when the candles were lit and everything was ready, Titus put on his hat and tiptoed out of the apartment. I must admit I was excited about meeting this one woman that I could love and cherish. And while I was straightening my tie in the mirror, I hear a soft, sexy voice right behind me. Hello, Johnny, darling. Huh? Turn around, lover. See who's here. Diana. Surprised? Uh, I'm really rocked. Your little kitten's crept back to you, Johnny. Yeah. Well, come on over here and let me listen to you purr. That's it, Johnny. Hold. Hold me tight. Oh, baby, baby. It's been a long time. You're glad to see me, aren't you? Yeah, my own private angel. And now I know for sure this is really heaven. But I can hardly believe it. How did you get here? They sent for me, Johnny, because I was the one woman you wanted most on earth. Yeah, very smart, these people. But don't talk, baby. Just tilt your mouth up. Yeah, this is it. Diana, I knew it. My husband. Get out of here, Titus. No, not this time, by George. Hey, don't. Put that down. He'll kill you, Johnny. Here, take this. Use it. Diana, no. Use it, I said. I staggered over to the sofa, mumbling out loud. How could I have been crazy enough to do such a terrible thing a second time? And in a place like this, how could they ever forgive me? And while I was mumbling, I felt somebody sit down beside me. And I looked around and saw it was the commissioner. Titus's body was gone and the commissioner was grinning at me. Don't feel bad, Johnny. There's nothing to forgive. But I shot Titus. He's dead. What difference does that make? But I killed him twice. How can I live here with that on my conscience? Oh, conscience, Johnny. In this land, there's no such thing as conscience. So brace up and let's have a drink and forget it. Hey, out there. Bring in the drinks. Yes, sir. Here they are. Titus? Oh, no, it can't be you. But it is, Mr. Babson. I'm frightfully sorry about this crimson stain on the opposite side of my shirt, sir. Uh, never mind that. I, I, I killed you again. Good gracious, sir. Don't be disturbed about that. I forgive you. And since you've always desired my wife, she's yours to keep. Take Diana with my blessings and my best wishes. Oh, Johnny, isn't it wonderful? Now we'll be together forever. No, I, I don't want you. You're the cause of all my troubles. You're an evil woman. But Johnny, darling. Get her out, Commissioner. Take her away. Johnny, my boy, get hold of yourself. Don't you realize that now you have everything you ever wanted? No, I've had it. I can't go on. Till the end of time, every single minute in this place is torture. But, Johnny. Ah, shut up. I hate this place. You hear me? If you think this is my idea of heaven, you're crazy. Johnny. What do you mean? Just what I said. I wish I'd been sent to hell. You wish you'd been sent to... Oh. <laughs> oh, but my dear fellow, where do you think you are? Theater 5 has presented Land of Milk and Honey, written by Albert Miller, produced and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Greta Tyson, Danny Ocko, Ivor Francis, and George Lloyd. Audio engineers, Marty Folia and Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastatsenko. 
Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Mr. Lee Bowman. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. That's Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.